in fact, this conversation on the phone is more challenging because I think all but using screens or on the speaking on the phone mm-hmm. is more challenging. Uh-huh. Um, um, I, with me, with my brain, I need to see the information, written information yep. to understand. Um, if not, um, is sort of I struggle a little bit. This is the Recovery After Stroke podcast with Bill Gassiamis, helping you navigate recovery after stroke. Bill from recoveryafterstroke.com. This is episode 113, and my guest today is Paul Fink. Paul experienced a hemorrhagic stroke caused by an AVM or an arteriovenous malformation when he was just 34 and has been getting better ever since. Paul has started to walk again, talk again, he's running and driving a car. He still has some speech issues due to aphasia, but this hasn't stopped him from also taking up public speaking. Now, has your recovery had to take a back seat due to COVID-19 restrictions? If you're feeling a little disconnected from your support team due to restrictions from COVID-19 shutdowns and lockdowns, and you are looking for more support, you may want to consider recovery after stroke coaching. People that have already signed up for recovery after stroke coaching get 12 months of unlimited access, a private one-on-one coaching thread with myself via a private forum. You have instant access to online training materials that can only be accessed by coaching clients. You get access to courses, monthly trainings, and challenges made by a stroke survivor for stroke survivors. You also get expert interviews that are only available to coaching clients and MP3s which you can download for listening on the go. All trainings are transcribed to PDF for people that prefer to read and take notes or highlight important bits for reviewing at a later time. You also get two live hour-long coaching calls per month where you can ask questions and get answers. You can access the site 24 hours a day, seven days a week and complete training at your own pace and without needing to leave the comfort of your own home. To find out more, simply go to recoveryafterstroke.com forward slash coaching. And now it's on with the show. Paul Fink, welcome to the podcast. Thank you very much. Hey, thanks for being here, man. I really appreciate it. You're uh, a local lockdown person. Yeah, I know. He's, uh, yeah, we'll, we'll, be, we'll be okay very soon, I guess. Yeah, we will be okay eventually. Can't go on forever. Yeah. Paul, tell me a little bit about what happened to you, man. What happened? Um, Well, I had a stroke over six years ago. Um, I was 34. I was pretty healthy and fit. Um, Never medical problems growing up and I was pretty fit. And um, anyway, I had a found out after I had a um, AVM, AVM stroke. Um, and what happened? Um, my memory is a little bit hazy because my stroke was very quick. Um, basically, um, I was Friday morning, um, almost going, going to shower, to going to work. Um, and I was, yeah, I was, um, feeling okay, feeling fine, I guess. Um, and, um, my wife said, um, because I can't remember saying that my wife said, I have a, I have a shocking headache. So, um, basically all of a sudden, I was um, sweating, um, trying to speak, but my words was um, not English or very gibberish. I was um, almost past with past rational thinking this stage pretty quickly. 
Mm-hmm. Um, luckily, was at home, and my wife was here, and um, and my wife called the ambulance to help me. Um, and um, yeah, I think um, I remember the paramedics came with my 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 bed. Um, I remember need water, uh, very lots of water, because um, I was sweating and I was struggling. Um, I think maybe half an hour. I reckon um, I passed out at home. Um, and I can't remember after that. Um, I can't remember waking up after two weeks in the coma. Yeah. And three or I think three brain injury, brain surgeries, but I can't remember. I can't remember my ICU stay. Um, vaguely. I have memories with the ward at the Alfred Hospital. Yeah. Um, and um, yeah, and uh, I think um, because um, uh, the, well, my wife said I have lots of drugs in, in my system. Yeah. So I was partially very confused with the drugs. I go. Um, so, so, but I think, um, was pretty fortunate because, because, um, uh, sort of, I missed it everything. <laughs> so, <laughs> and possibly, um, then I'm not traumatized with me because I, I can't, I can't, I, I can't, um, remember and um yeah i think um i think more my wife and my family is more traumatized yeah that, versus me but um that's really really interesting man um this whole experience has left you with i imagine at the beginning aphasia you couldn't talk yeah and um swallowing well, and issues i think i can't remember um swallowing issues but my wife i have a few issues mm-hmm. um one stage option to with a tracky with a my throat um luckily i avoided it and um and yeah i waking up this after the coma um, my speech was uh zero but but i um not aware i was not speaking so i was thinking thinking always but i thought was talking also i remember um, i remember uh, at the alfred my best friends um visiting me um and um was nice nice conversation nice laughs laughing and it was funny anyway because and i thought was talking also two-way conversation that found out after i was my speech was zero how long after did you find out how long did it take before you realized and someone told you that you weren't actually speaking in that conversation. I reckon a few months, maybe. Wow. I reckon. Yeah, I think um, pretty sort of v- weird experience, but yeah. feel never scared because I was um, feeling normal, I guess. 
Okay, so and you're you're not your physical body is not normal, but you're feeling internally and in your head you're feeling normal. Yeah, I was talking, speaking normally. Um, yeah, but um, you couldn't I, walk, right? You couldn't walk. No, uh, yeah, definitely. And um, I remember just... one vague memory in the Alfred, um, in the water, I think, and um, and I think I was trying to walk somewhere, maybe going to the toilet. Can't remember. Anyway, um, lots of tubes in my body mm -hmm. and basically I tried to walk, <laughs> fell over oh. on the floor and lots of doctors and nurses running to m help me and whatever. But um, yeah, but I was not aware I was... Um, not walking and speaking and all that. So how long after that did you take to actually um, speak again and start to communicate and most importantly, realize that you were speaking, actually speaking, not thinking you were speaking? Yeah, I think um, after moving to rehab hospital at Crawford Hospital, mm -hmm maybe um, four weeks after, after the stroke. So I remember um, what happened was um, moving to Caulfield and I was thinking I was waiting, waiting to move. And why, why the, the wait? Um, I was thinking, um, um, my wife, Lauren, maybe call my folks to come to drive to the hospital or whatever. But um, basically, I need a, um, a hospital transport. Um, so the hospital transport trip, one other guy was transport also so and this guy tried to speak with me and this guy said i remember well this guy said what happened to you and trying to respond and my words was zero so I was lost for words. Um, really, really, um, really, yeah, sorry. Literally. Yeah, literally lost for words. Yeah, right. So after that, I found out huh, I'm maybe in, in trouble. <laughs> uh, so, <laughs> so it took you on the trip in an in a ambulance transport vehicle it took you that long to realize that, oh, actually, there's nothing coming out of my mouth. I'm not actually able to talk yet. Yeah, I think um, I'm in trouble. And um, after moving at rehab and seeing my doctors and um, doctors discussing with other doctors and nurses all about me, but not speaking with me. Yeah. But um, I was a little bit isolated, the conversation, and a little bit um, anxious um, because I was thinking, oh, this guy, this doctor must be this. He's a um, is um, maybe. Um, Lots of deficits and not no hope, but is um big road ahead, yeah, yeah, yeah. So when you so when you woke up, you spent some time in hospital. You you couldn't speak. You had right side deficits. Yeah. Yep. And, and then right yeah. side. Right side yep. deficits, arm and leg. Yep. And that meant that you had to recover both your speaking and your ability to walk 
how long did you spend in rehab in total, getting back on your feet in some way? Um, including the hospital and rehab, roughly six months. Okay. Um, the doctors trying to discharge a little bit earlier, but I was um, I was going so well with rehab. Was the the um, the doctors decided extending the stay? Mm-hmm. I was pretty happy about pretty happy about it because I was a little bit anxious to coming home. Yeah. Um, because I was thinking coming home maybe less rehab, less sessions. So yeah, and but. I think, um, yeah, I think um, overall was good idea staying more at the hospital, more time. Yeah, more, more rehabilitation, give you more yeah. chance to be safe inside that place where they help you, where they've got a lot of support. Yeah, and I'm a little bit um, anxious to... Um, I... I have two overnight trips before my discharge, Mm -hmm. trying to, um, I guess, um, what's the word? Maybe reacquaintance my home life. And because initially I was thinking, oh, um, at home, more anxious because thinking, where is the closest doctor in uh-huh. case? Yeah, right. Um, but is this, um, yeah, I said not much traumatized, but I am a little bit traumatized with the, um, I guess, anxiety coming home yeah and it's about but, w- what happens if it happens again how will i be able to get help who's going to be yeah. around to help me out yeah yeah because i'm um, almost um 10 months after the stroke um driving or my wife drives drive me to the alfred um my home and not my shells. So was pretty anxious um, driving further. Yeah, right. Um, uh, for example, we had a um, two days trip at Mount Martha, um, maybe one year after my stroke. Yeah. And I was a little bit anxious to the drive. Mm-hmm. But same feeling. My wife organized a trip for us overseas about a year after my stroke. And that was really hard because we were going to go to New York. And I didn't want to go because I was afraid. I'm, what happens? I've heard all the bad stories about, you know, New York, about not New York, about uh, American hospital system and all that type of thing. Yeah. And my thoughts were, what if something happens and I'm there and I can't get back home quick enough or I can't get hospital care? Uh, yeah. What's it going to cost if I have to go to hospital? Will they, will they give me a bill for $100,000 or something? <laughs> yeah. Um, we went and it was okay, but it, it was on my mind the whole six weeks that we were away. It really played on my mind. Yeah, I think it's very similar. I guess any trips and extending my myself and if i survive um i'll be more relieved and less anxious yeah. after that did they remove the faulty blood vessels in your brain the avm is it gone now it's gone luckily yeah which means it'll, um, it'll never bleed again now it's completely gone like me that that was a relief after they took it out because now i know it can't possibly bleed again it's not there anymore uh, so true i was saying i had a angiogram 
after um, eight months after my stroke. And before I was pretty anxious because reoccurring strokes and whatever. Mm. But after the angiogram and the confirming the all, I will be all clear, I was so relieved and almost um, um, turned the corner with my rehab. Yeah. Because um, after that is the worst case, you will be tired or, but never, not more other strokes. And yeah. So I think, yeah. um, and still very fortunate. Yeah, absolutely. And, um, In your Instagram, your Instagram says your, your, your Instagram is Professor Fink. Are you a real professor? No. <laughs> <laughs> no, no, definitely not. So how did you get the name Professor Fink? <laughs> um, basically, my, um, my, my E12 English teacher was a funny and zany person. <laughs> Mrs. Scott decided every pupil had a nickname so i was my was professor fink <laughs> so for example other other people was uh doctor or whatever i was professor so sometimes school friends um use it professor so not sure why with instagram but um but uh, yeah, it's awesome, man. I love it. I love I it. Um, um, no, nothing to do with uh, medical. I have med my wife. He's a physio, luckily. Yeah. Because Lauren, he's a more uh, med medical oriented, I guess. Yeah. But luckily, um, Lauren's background is very beneficial with me because. Yes. Because my understanding is sometimes it's lacking. Yeah. But um, Lauren always translates with a doctor's um, conversations. In normal language. Yeah, exactly. So I was, I was working with um, full-time with IT, with uh, computers. Yeah. Yeah. Um, Nothing to with professors. <laughs> yeah. uh, how long are you back at work? Are you working in your field or have you changed fields? What kind of work do you do now? Yeah, I'm still not working. Um, I guess my recovery is um, ongoing and a good chance I will be um, he'll fully, never fully recover. Yeah. But that's, that's fine. What's fine for me. Yeah. Um, but, um, I'm keen to work on the future. Yeah. Um, I guess I still, still with it, still smart, I guess. Yeah. Um, Depends who you ask. Yeah. If you ask yeah, your, mates, your mates will yeah, say you're not. Yeah. Um, but, um, I guess I have limits with my aphasia, medication, mobility. Um, but also I was, I, I said I was working with IT, but I was, um, I guess I was trying to do a good job, any job. Yeah, but I was never passionate with my career. Uh -huh. um, not not knocking IT, but um, it wasn't I think, thing. Uh, but I was never I never found the perfect role with me. Right. So, and um, yeah, that's why um, I'm not working still. 
Um, and but my wife always said, um, pre-stroke, I said, um, always want a uh, um, hands-on dad. So, so you you can be you can be daddy daycare kind of guy. Exactly. Sounds That's good, man. Uh, Nothing wrong with yeah. that. That's amazing. I actually yeah, I enjoyed know. I enjoyed being at home more when I had uh, when I was recovering from the bleeds in my brain and then the surgery because I was around the kids more. So I was at home when they came home from school. Um, when I started to drive, I would take them to school. So it yeah. was really good because I had more time at home, which oh. I had never had. I had never had in thirty-seven years. You know, in, in all the years that I was working. I was always the one who was away from home and my wife was the one that was always doing pickups and drop-offs and all that kind of thing. Yeah, I'm so fortunate because um, my, well, my oldest son was um, six, uh, seven, seven months after my stroke. All right. So very fortunate because my son can't remember my stroke. Uh. And I have two sons now, and um, I guess Dad, me, is uh, is normal. I guess uh, is uh, because no, no uh, other comparison. So no trauma for them or, about your stroke uh, and what happened to Dad. And I, oh my God, we nearly lost him, and none of that stuff. Not really, not really. My my son is a little bit more curious with more strokes now and possibly a little bit anxious because dad had a stroke, mm. but maybe with you, this him, but, um, it's me, but, um, yeah, I think, um, I think very blessed, not almost six years, not working because lots of time with my son, with my family, mm. Um and yeah, dropping off and picking up. I'm driving now, so awesome. More independent and and um yeah, very sort of um not almost the the stroke is life changing experience with me. Yeah, but um I feel more my um. <laughs> manner or um, um, attitude, I guess, always very positive, pre-stroke anyway, yep. always very positive. So um, yeah, I guess my attitude is, um, um, yes, I had a stroke, I can't do I can't change the past, so move forward and 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 um, same. I was this thing with other um, Stephanie podcasts um, recently, and uh, very similar. Um, uh, um, Outlook, yeah, Stephanie Ho. You mean? Yeah. Yeah. And um, I think she said um, similar thing. Um, you can't change the past, or no, maybe don't de- de- later this. So. <laughs> yeah, I, I know what you're saying. Stephanie was on episode 102, and yeah. she's an extremely positive person. She just talks about moving forward, the future, recovery. She's been recovering for 10 years. Mm. Um, and recovery is still continuing and it's still ongoing for her and she's getting better and better. And it sounds like you're getting better and better as well. And you, you had aphasia, your speech is really good. As far as I'm concerned, like it's, it's fine. You can communicate normally, but tell me like with aphasia, because I don't completely understand it. And a lot of people might not. Yeah. Is it just the words that you have trouble getting out? Does the thinking, is the thinking the same? Is it normal? Is it always kind of happening 
uh, as it always has, and it's just the words that don't come out. How do you experience aphasia? Yeah, lots of um, elements, I guess. One is find, can't find the words. The thinking always there. Um, saying it out loud is more harder. Um, and the aphasia is affected with different lots of parts is um, my memory um, and I, for example, um, I mucked up with similar objects. Um, for example, I... I'm, I marked out my kids' names. Um, Everyone does that, Paul. Yeah, I know. But, I still um, do that, man. <laughs> yeah. My kids are 24 and 20, and I still get them mixed up. And they always roll their eyes and just ask, and they ask me, like, are you having another stroke? Like, what's wrong with you, man? Yeah, I think, um, for example, pass me the fork. And my son, Dad, is the knife. Yeah. And I said, oh, yeah, enough. Yes. So okay. I similar objects, knife and food, fork and spoon is similar objects. Yeah. Um, Does it, is it getting better? So do you notice that some days the speech is better than other days? And what is it affected by? Is it when you're tired, does it get a little bit? Harder? Yeah, yeah, definitely is more challenging after more t- after being more tired. Mm-hmm. Um, if you've had a stroke and you're in recovery, you'll know what a scary and confusing time it can be. You're likely to have a lot of questions going through your mind, like how long will it take to recover? Will I actually recover? What things should I avoid in case I make matters worse? Doctors will explain things, but obviously you've never had a stroke before. You probably don't know what questions to ask. If this is you, you may be missing out on doing things that could help speed up your recovery. If you're finding yourself in that situation, stop worrying and head to recoveryafterstroke.com where you can download a guide that will help you. It's called seven questions to ask your doctor about your stroke. These seven questions are the ones Bill wished he'd asked when he was recovering from a stroke. They'll not only help you better understand your condition, they'll help you take a more active role in your recovery. Head to the website now, recoveryafterstroke.com and download the guide. It's free. In fact, this conversation on the phone is more challenging because I think a little bit using screens or on the speaking on the phone mm. is more challenging. Uh-huh. Um, um, I, with me, with my brain, I need to see the information, written information yep. to understand. Um, if not, um, is sort of I struggle a little bit. So you need um, to, if you if you can read something, that's easier for you to take that information in than just by watching uh, a movie or by listening. Is that what you're saying? Yeah, yeah, definitely. And um, in fact, recently, sometimes watching a movie or a show, um, I love. Uh, I love using English subtitles. Okay. Because um, I m- miss a few words and not sure I can't can't understand it. So subtitles is um, easier. Oh. Wow, yeah, man, that's helps. amazing. That's amazing because I have the opposite: is words don't do me any favors i can't get information off a page if i'm watching a video that is the best for me if i'm watching the video and trying to read subtitle that's really distracting that bothers me a lot 
So I, really? I can't deal with words. I have to watch a video or listen. And I think I prefer to watch a video because when I'm listening, I get easily distracted. Whereas yeah. with a video, I don't get distracted. I see what's happening and I hear the noise, the, the sound at the same time. Yeah, so interesting because um, I love listening on the radio mm. and um but listening on the radio um even including podcasts and whatever i enjoyed it but sometimes um the information in and out in and out quickly yeah i can't process the um process quickly to yep. remember it yeah so, so I, when i listen to audio books because i i prefer to listen to audio books instead of read the book that information seems to stay around longer for me than the information that i've read on the page so yeah. reading it often i have to go back many times to read the same paragraph but hearing it the information goes in better. Yeah, that's so, well. I guess any stroke is um, different. Mm -hmm. So, no idea. My problem is unique or very common. No idea. But I'd um, say your, I'd, I'd say what's happening with you is common for other people. There'll be many yeah. people that have the same experience as you. Um, it's just interesting. It's definitely every stroke is different for every person. Mm. You're, you've been recovering for six years and how long did it take you to get back behind the wheel of a car? Um, was two and a half years. Okay. Um, my wife was pretty shocked with the, the progress. Yeah. Um, was, I was pretty shocked myself. <laughs> because um, initially, after the the stroke, um, I I have you I have few issues with my what one left eye. Uh -huh. Um, to, well, um, what happened was um, uh, after the stroke, um, one eye bled. So, um, was seeing it, one eye is fine, other eye is a little bit blurry, mm. almost a blob with the, the problem is I was not speaking. So, I can't tell anyone with my problem. Wow. And um, eventually, with my wife... Um, with um, get a sort of guessing game, um, I is describing the my problem. Basically, uh, the eyes, one eye is, was blurry, yeah. can't see well. So maybe I was in a hospital. Maybe um, during uh, roughly started to walk after four months and basically had a minor eye operation um, and basically fixed the eye properly. And, um, wow. and after that, my eyes was fine. But saying that, um, other problem occurred was a little bit tonal. Um, um, not uh, the word is um, tunnel vision a little uh -huh. bit. Yeah. Sort of um, um, walking um, sort of um, speaking. Sorry, um, looking straight. Yeah. Is is okay, but walking side um on the side. Uh -huh. Um, very had to focus on the sides quickly. Yeah. yeah. So I was a little bit nervous to um, uh, 
learning to drive with this problem, but um, but sort of resolved pretty quickly, maybe two years. Your eye got better and the tunnel vision went away? Yeah, not fully, but pretty quickly. Yeah, right. Um, and, uh, yeah, I think um, driving was pretty um, big milestone with my independence, obviously. Yeah. With with kids, um, because my goals was to trying to, um, I guess, um, uh, being normal, I guess, but um, be um, as um, being normal as possible, yeah. um, and. Um, Driving with my son will be, and driving to school or kindergarten is a big part of my motivation to get better. Um, and um, uh, I think, yeah, I think. Um, Sounds good, man. It sounds like you're, you've got some goals, you're working towards them, you've achieved some bit really big ones. And you're still achieving more goals because I notice on your Instagram, you're doing running. How long has it been yeah. since you started running again? Because I remember commenting on one of your posts that it looked like you were running because you had stolen something and they were chasing you. Yeah. Um, basically, I was, after the stroke, was wheelchair bound four months. And first, first goal was learning to walk. Um, learning to walk was was big um, milestone, yeah. and um, I use lots of not lots of maybe use aids, AFOs initially, um, and. Walking cane. Um, after that, um, um, removing the AFO and walking cane, and um, eventually, or oh, sort of, I'm backtracking. But I love running pre-stroke. Mm. Um, my passion was running or it's because running is my sort of heavy place mm. clear the hair and i think um clear i um think clearly with running wow so but i have pre-stroke issue injuries with my knees prevent to run uh -huh. so it's a long story but um uh maybe three three years um or three and a half years after my stroke and i was doing well improving my mobility um I found out this um program at the Epworth Hospital with all about high intensity running group. So the guy um the physio, Gavin Williams, is a was a I guess the guru in this area with neuro and um and uh, started to um, started to this program. Initially, I was not running yet, so I lots of drills preparing to run, lots of mini tramps and stairs, and lots of exercises. Um, 
and um, maybe 10, 11 months after that, um, technically I ran. I was using a AFO because only I was not using AFO with at home, ran the house, but uh-huh. only only this program. Yep. Um, and um, I think um, started ten meters and stop. And started again, whatever. I guess very common with stroke survivors is repetition. Yeah, and and slow, slowly, slowly, and then increasing it, and then increasing it by a little bit. Yeah, and um, and and um, eventually, I guess um, I started um running farther um, and a little bit high peel yep. um, and removing the the AFO was a big thing also. And many, every mini milestone will be good. It uh, will be, was nice. Exciting. Exciting, I guess. Yeah, right. Um, so, um, how far do you run now? So, how long has it been since you started running? Did you say? Uh, I was, I think, um, at 18, 2018. Oh, 2018. So, it's been about yeah. two years. So, how far do you run now? And how long do you run for? Um, the most run with non not stopping was 400 meters so obviously not for, with normal people 400 meters not that much no only one lap at the um oval yeah. but um with my one side um paralysis yeah is a was a huge thing yep. 400 meters absolutely um and tr- i'm still going with my running group now and um now with my more interval training so more cardio so um for example run 100 meters and stop 10 seconds and start it again mm-hmm. and stop and um, helping with a heart rate and, and um, yeah, I think, um, and I, with COVID, I guess um, he's more tougher because can't see my physios and yeah. And your trainer. Yeah. And, yeah. Your training and your running group as well. Yeah. Yeah. But um, I'm, I, I think I'm, achieved with I um, can do myself now yeah so I go to the local parks um, and I run and always better with other people yeah more but, fun um, but saying that I'm enjoyed um, listening with my headphones and but motivational music and whatever yeah would be nice so do you find your happy place again in that time when you're running is that well you go back there good question because i said i started to run maybe a few years few years ago but the feeling was very different versus normal running because i was feel running not freely yeah um and um but more and few months ago only um try to feel a little bit more natural mm. and feeling the same amazing feeling to run again not not fairly fully yeah not 
nowhere near. But um, I guess I'm more, more, I more freely, more faster. I guess. So your, so what you're saying is slowly, slowly your, because this was my experience, and I don't run, Paul. I'm not interested in running. <laughs> That's where we're different, hundred percent. Yeah. But um, when I do run, it's to run across the road or to get away from the car or you know just to muck around with somebody to run after them just for a bit of a, a fun i don't run as a per, for for any other purpose but um when i started to rerun i had to focus where my foot was landing and that made it really difficult and really tiring yeah so is that what your experience was when you have to focus so much and now yep. and now are you starting to focus less on where your foot goes and you're just doing it instinctively? Definitely. Yeah, bang on. Basically, um, initially I was very scared rolling my ankle all the time, especially not using the AFO. Um, I'm using the soft angle brace, basically uh, um, almost uh, similar to basketball players use it. Uh, uh, angle brace, um, more support, I guess, yeah. but not AFO, not hard. Um, and yeah, it was I, I rolled my ankles so many times, um, and, um, and one sense was, um, lucky because. My sensation is so much um, poor. My sensation is so has so poor. Yeah. I can't feel my um, Your pain. ankles, <laughs> but I, I can't control my ankles. So it sort of um, with repetition. Um, more and more, I trust my legs. Yeah. Okay. Um, and more level ground mm -hmm. because I have I have a little bit inversion issues. Basically, um, my ankle rolls up. Yeah. Very easily rolling my ankles, but I'm I'm pretty cautious. Um. I never feel, never want to roll badly. Um, only saw maybe one or two days, but um, yep. but now he's um, more and more confident. But saying that, um, a little bit um, anxious to walk with uneven grounds. Yeah. Um, for example, last year and um, my physio and me went to the 1,000 steps. Wow, man. Yep. I've been and, um, yeah, it was a beautiful spot. Yep. Um, and um, I was thinking, thinking going there, maybe testing it out, unlikely to to climb all the way. Yeah. So and my physio is trying to stop. Paul, stop. But I was thinking I'm feeling pretty good. Yeah. Um and um yeah, we climbed all the way and it was a nice feeling. Yeah. Um it's fun up there. I, I went there as I got to the top my left leg started to get heavier and heavier and it was a bit harder. So it started to, I had to pay attention to where I was putting my foot and make sure that it was above the step so I wouldn't trip over. Yeah. Is that what was happening to you as well or? Yeah, well, um, well, 1,000 steps, a little bit different because steps not versing, I guess, um, um, I guess walking, but steps. Yeah, up, up. Like I don't know. Step climbing is climbing. Bit, yeah, climbing yeah. like steps in a like in a house. 
Yeah. So um, versus ramps, I guess. Yeah. Um, but um, I'm pr- I'm pretty good hard peel, but coming down is more challenging. Right. Because um, because other other muscles not firing yet, uh-huh. especially with my quads and um, hemis. Right. Sorry, my sorry, my quads is firing well. Sorry, the hemis not firing at all, or oh, not much. Yeah, right. So coming down is more with gravity is more need more careful to roll down, I guess. Um, and coming down the one down the steps, um, some parts, um, with no r- railing, yes. um, basically I sit down on the floor, um, not kneeling, but, um, almost one step, one step down, 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 yep. on my bum. On your behind, yep. Okay. Yeah, because only way. Okay. So, um, or other option is sideways. Yep. So, because, um, for example, my home has a has a double story house. Yep. And um, and after discharging, the railing is the only one side. Yes. So, um, but coming down almost three years, maybe two and a half years, I use sideways method coming down at home. So. Is your bedroom upstairs? Yeah. And I was, I guess, resisting home modifications. Excuse me. Modifications a little bit. Yeah. Is my... got, we've got it upstairs as well, but my bedroom is downstairs. So for the first three or four months after surgery, I didn't go upstairs. I did use the stairs for rehab. So my physio came over and he told me to step one, two, three steps up and then one, two, three steps down. Mm-hmm. That was to give me a little bit of um, start getting the muscle tone back on the left side. And it was safe because I could hold on and it was only three steps and I wasn't going to go to the top. Yeah. I was doing that as an exercise, but I didn't actually go to the top of the stairs because I was afraid of falling. And my knee used to buckle because really, I'm not sure why the, the knee used to feel like sometimes it would just give way. It must have been one of the muscles, maybe either the quads or the hammies. I did. I never asked why it was happening. So I stopped, um, so I stopped going up the stairs and then I remember coming down the stairs, focusing really harder, a lot harder focusing where my foot was landing and being very slow and holding on to the railing in case I lost my balance. Uh, but then if the railing was on my left side, then it was a problem because my left hand couldn't grip very well yeah. and I was afraid on my left side so I had to try and find stairs where the railings are on the right side and always take the right railing yeah so that so got better with time so did you find yourself feeling more and more comfortable coming down the stairs from your house now without your bum with level ground yes but I ain't even ground you saw a problem yeah. um one I guess one goal beside running is I like hiking. So 1,000 steps is similar hiking. Yeah. Um, and still talking with my orthodist, possibly a, um, possibly a special brace with yeah. specifically hiking. And this brace is physically can't roll the ankles, uh-huh. so more safer, I guess, mm-hmm. because my um, at the one thousand steps, I use my soft ankle brace, mm-hmm. 
the ankle brace is pretty good with stability, mm-hmm. but not foolproof. So it can roll my ankle. Um, yeah, but um, yeah. Sounds interesting, man. As we're coming up to the end of the episode, so what is the future looking like for you? What are your next few goals that you want to achieve or get better at? Uh, good question. Um, I, I hope we'll be still always in um, motivation to get better Yeah, and trying to, I guess, um, uh, being a role model with my kids. Mm-hmm. Um, I'm keen to work on the future. Um, I was... I started um, started public speaking a little bit. Yes. And um, and I'm I'm liking it so far. Possibly not the full time role on yeah. the future. Yeah. But I'm definitely continuing public speaking because um, I guess people. Um, likes my um, story. I'm not sure why, but <laughs> but um, you're, you're a likable. You're a likable guy, man. You're all right. Yeah. Um. But um, other girls. Um. I guess um, improving my running, hiking. Help, um, improve my mobility. Um, I'm still going with my speed therapy and OT and physio, so I tend to improve my physical and mental abilities. That way, we will be more ready to to work. Yeah. Um. Um, what else? Um, yeah, I think, um, that's perfect, man. That's perfect for now. You know, what will be fun is if you're up for it and we ever get out of this lockdown, maybe one day I'll come up to your place and yeah. we can go to a cafe and you can buy me a coffee. Yeah, a beer or a coffee. You choose. <laughs> Probably a coffee, mate. Um, yeah, sound, sounds excellent idea. Paul Fink, thank you so much for being on the podcast, man. Thank you very much, Bill. Discover how to heal your brain after stroke. Go to recoveryafterstroke.com. Importantly, we present many podcasts designed to give you an insight and understanding into the experiences of other individuals. Opinions and treatment protocols discussed during any podcast are the individual's own experience, and we do not necessarily share the same opinion, nor do we recommend any treatment protocol discussed. All content on this website and any linked blog, podcast, or video material controlled this website or content is created and produced for informational purposes only and is largely based on the personal experience of Bill Gassiamis. The Content is intended to complement your medical treatment and support healing. It is not intended to be a substitute for professional medical advice and should not be relied on as health advice. The information is general and may not be suitable for your personal injuries, circumstances, or health objectives. Do not use our content as a standalone resource to diagnose, treat, cure, or prevent any disease for therapeutic purposes or as a substitute for the advice of a health professional. Never delay seeking advice or disregard the advice of a medical professional, your doctor, or your rehabilitation 
education program based on our content. If you have any questions or concerns about your health or medical condition, please seek guidance from a doctor or other medical professional. If you are experiencing a health emergency or think you might be, call triple zero if in Australia or your local emergency number immediately for emergency assistance or go to the nearest hospital emergency department. Medical information changes constantly. While we aim to provide current quality information in our content, we do not provide any guarantees and assume no legal liability or responsibility for the accuracy, currency or completeness of the content. If you choose to rely on any information within our content, you do so solely at your own risk. We are careful with links we provide. However, third-party links from our website are followed at your own risk and we are not responsible for any information you find there.